water is going to keep coming and we're going to have nowhere else to go. Climate change, life is hard. We are the front line. A lot of people just feel like the United States is the promised land and that's where a lot of them wind up going. They're losing their identity as Marshallese. We're just a small island in the Pacific trying to make sure that people hear our voices. The geographical structure of the Marshall Islands is it's a ring of islands, so it's very narrow, so it's very susceptible to sea level rise. When the sea level rises, it affects everybody. No one is an exception. So this was like one of the King Tide events that occurred in 2014. King Tides are when there's like high swells, you know, combined with like strong wind currents. During King Tides, these vulnerable areas, many of the people, you know, you know, some move, but then some decide to stay and just rebuild. A rough estimate, you could say between 30 and 40 percent of all Marshallese are now living in the U.S., if not higher, but without the data to support it, it's hard to really pinpoint. Anyone on the street that you ask, does anyone have friends or family living in the U.S.? And usually 95 percent raise their hand saying, yes, we do. Tests on the island of Bikini couldn't know its implications. The United States government tested um, 67 nuclear bombs in the Marshall Islands. 20 of those tests were hydrogen bombs, including the Bravo shot that was a thousand times greater than Hiroshima, and it radiated most of the northern Marshall Islands. The shock wave visibly roared across the ocean and hit the camera ship miles away from ground point zero. Anyone in the area that was involved in the testing, they were told to get out of harm's way. Nobody told any of the Marshall Islanders that this was going to happen. Kili is like the canary in the coal mine for climate change, and that's where the Bikinians live. They did not choose Kili Island, that's where they were moved when they were moved off Bikini. That was like their third stop on the way, you know, on their big exodus, and that's where they've been since 1948. But in the end, it's going to be a really um, tough situation because if we have to move in mass off of Kili, I don't know how they, they do that. We, we don't have the money to do that. People have uh, been relocated to other atolls and even to the United States. All the nuclear victims of the Marshall Islands had, had lawsuits in the United States Court of Claims. And the U.S. did not like this situation. So what they set up was this Compact of Free Association. 
It was like a billion dollar aid package over 15 years. We'll give you access to the United States. You don't need a visa. You can stay as long as you want. So no Marshallese citizen ever again, because of that first compact, can sue the United States government for anything that happened in the past, present, or future with regard to the nuclear testing. They're done. There are only 60,000 of us, very small population. And one third of that 60,000 is already in the United States. It should raise a grave concern for everyone. It's a choice that the people made because of the circumstances that they face each day, including climate change. There's a pocket of Marshallese living in Arkansas. Someone went about 30 years ago and he told his friends and family and the community just grew. So a lot of the Marshallese living in Arkansas are actually working in factories, a lot of chicken factories and whatnot. Um, but it's kind of a unique place to find Marshallese. People are always surprised because it's so landlocked. There's always like thousands and thousands of Marshallese people uh, moving here in America. If you see new faces around here, that just means there's more that just came from the Marshall Islands. Um, I feel like they, they've turned Arkansas um, into the Marshall Islands. My family will I started off at Marshall Island, of course, at Medro. When we came here, it was all of, all of them working in the factory and they were all pitching in just to like have a good living, you know, make sure everything is all paid off. Most of uh, college graduates from Marshall Islands, they, they come and they work in factories, you know. They, they look at themselves ending up in factories. It's kind of sad. You know, people are a product of their environments. I've visited Marshallese communities all over the U.S. and the people there, they're different. And they've lost a lot of their, what I would call their island character. We're really nothing without our islands. We can say, you know, it's not the place that makes it a home. It's the people. But really, if you migrate to the, to the States, it's not the same. Over here, you were you're given islands and lands and a culture that was passed down generation to generation. So having that being threatened by climate change, it's, it's, you know, it's a scary thing. Just a matter of just continuing to teach younger children about how important it is to preserve your culture because this is how we survive out here. When I first started here, I always wanted to tell myself I'm American <laughs> because, you know, I thought it was really cool. Most of the kids that I knew, we, it was hard for us to keep the culture because we mostly were trying to focus on how to speak the language. I have to say, though, that the people in the mainland try very much to try to maintain and do activities that uh, make them feel at home and make them remember home.
The beauty contest. It's a new thing that we we actually started this year. The pageant. It's focused on climate change. It's focused on what you want to do about it. First, we've got Miss Melina Flores. What I learned out of this beauty contest was learning my language. <laughs> For me, that was really important. I don't want to forget my culture, my heritage, or anything. You know, when our land is gone, or when our, when our island is gone, then what, you know? I, I knew more about my culture and then telling myself, wow, I'm blessed. There's a little Marshallese in me, you know? The community here in Springdale, in Arkansas, and other states where Marshallese resides, they try to maintain their culture as much as they possibly can. They try, but with a community like the United States, where it is a totally different environment, they're trying their best, but it's very difficult. You know, the culture is also very much attached to the land and the activities that people do on each of the islands. So in the end, I think the culture is uh, lost when people move from the foods. You know, I lived abroad for 12 years and I could have lived and continued to live abroad, but I made a choice to come back. I'll be here, no matter what. It seems like people are giving up already. I don't think uh, we, sh we should give up on trying to mitigate uh, what is happening to the country. After all, you know, these are our homes. I believe the United States government can do more for the people of the Marshall Islands. We were displaced by the nuclear testing. We were gonna be displaced by climate change. <laughs> Oh, my God.